Hello everybody and welcome to Milo the Gathering. I'm Milo and uh, today you're going to be seeing a gathering on a website called MTGA Draft. Now this is where you can go with your friends and do a fake draft. Uh, you can just uh, insert a cube or any any magic set um, and uh, it'll simulate a draft so it'll let any number of people who have the session ID code join and you simulate a draft. Now you can't actually play any games so what it does is it has a, ni a, a neat little button there where you can import your entire draft list into MTG Arena and then uh, you can play through challenges with your friends. So that's what we're doing today. This is a group of friends of mine from the store from way back when. You know, we're getting nostalgic. We miss each other. We want to draft. We want to have a cube draft. So uh, my buddy, the owner of the cube, he doesn't uh, like it when I say his name. So we're going to go ahead and call him uh, uh, Wambulance. We're going to say that's him, Wambulance. Um, and... Uh, we're gonna do this. We're gonna do this draft, this cube draft with my friends. Should be a good time. Okay. So when I am doing a draft like this, there's a lot of good cards. What I tend to do is just go with something I haven't played in a while, um, or something that I'm just really enjoying playing. Uh, so right off the bat I see that Oracle of Moldiah and I don't know if it's the best card in the pack honestly but I, I took it because I really wanted to play ramp I don't play EDH so my only chance to play magic really is just drafts and when I play cube I want to play some cards like like Oracle of Moldiah it's fun right you want to get your lands in play uh, there's a lot of really fun big things you can do in this cube uh, plus just having the access to that mana it's pretty nice. Uh, so the way this works is you uh, actually have to drag your pick down. Or you can click the card and there's a confirm pick button that pops up, I believe. Uh, you have to wait for everybody to draft. There's no timing out. There's no like time limit or anything. So if somebody just drops, you're all stuck, I think. But if you're playing with everybody who's agreed to be playing on Arena and everything drafting on here like everybody has to be on the same page so uh, you don't really have to worry about that I think and also I, I once or twice we've had people lo lose like a internet connection while they were drafting and when they come back everything just resumes as normal it was actually surprisingly responsive to that Let me know if you've used this before to draft. You can even draft Kaldheim. Some of us are thinking about drafting Kaldheim like this. Uh, if you want to do that, let me know. I don't know. Is this allowed? Like, I don't even know. This is still... It's just how I'm playing Magic with my friends. It's fun. Having a good time. Alright, so uh, since we already have the Oracle, I see the Golos. And, you know, go big or go home, right? That's what they say. In sports, uh, that card is interesting. This is I, I should also say this is all of our first times playing with this cube. We were playing with another cube before, and it we just went like all out, like play the best things possible on arena. And uh, obviously, Oko was a problem, and some other things were problems. So we. Uh, the Wambulance who runs the cube actually had a one-on-one -on -one with everybody who plays it, asked them about their preferences, even created a uh, like a, a document, a survey that we all filled out and then made 60 changes to the cube. So uh, big big ups to, to Wambulance because that is a lot of work to put into making some updates I just don't do it. You know, I haven't updated my actual cube since lockdown started. <laughs> I'm just like, uh, it's too much work and I'm never going to play with it anyway. I might be getting cards and putting them in and taking them out before anyone plays. Alright, so... 
right away I look at the Ulamog and I go, ooh, I want to be a naughty boy. I want to be a naughty, naughty boy. Uh, the cultivate is nice, and the problem is if I let the cultivate go around, then somebody else might snatch it up and be like, ooh, this deck's open. I'm going to play ramp, and then I'm going to end up missing out on all sorts of cards later. So I can't let that happen. I can't. I I I don't want. I don't want that. That that's worst case scenario. I like first pick the Oracle and the Golos, and I want to go big or go home, like we were talking about earlier. And well, you know, this is all part of it. And Ulamog, who's gonna play Ulamog? Come on, that's so many manas. What are you even doing with yourself? What are you doing with your life? Okay, we got a thought seize. Uh, it's just a weird glitch, or is entered incorrectly, or something. Uh, it's not the Amonkhet version. Um, it is just the regular, regular old, old, dirty old Thotsies. Dirty, smelly old Thotsies. That card is, I, I, I think it's the highest pick in this cube, right? Because there can only be cards from Arena in this cube, we can't put a recurring nightmare in a black lotus in the deck. So now that we are black green, we start to think about what type of black green deck are we? And what types types of decks. I mean we're still pretty open. We can go we can go pretty big here. I mean we have the Golo, so we wanna know if we're gonna play like blue or or uh we could play the search for a scant we're not really committed to anything because we have a cultivate now. Um, and, you know, we also have a Paradise Druid, which is... I love the artwork. Um, it reminds me of my... F it, it looks like my f one of my favorite drag queens, Alaska. So, I gotta take it, because I want to look at that card all day. And... I, I love big, powerful things, and I definitely I wanted to take that Timely Reinforcements or the Maze Mind Tomb. They were, they were both really good. Um, timely is, is just such a, <laughs> such a dirty, dirty card uh, against Mono Red or Aggro decks. Um, yeah. There's a lot of fun cards in this cube, like cards that I'm really excited to play with. And it's a nice change of pace from uh, grinding, you know, the constructed formats. Uh, the downside is that you do need to have a lot of wild cards. Uh, so we had a few different picks we could have taken there, but Exclusion Mage, I think we can play a lot of colors. We still don't really know what type of deck we are. We could be Salte, we could be uh, uh, what's junk called, these Abzan. You know, we don't know. We're, we're open to things. You know. We could have taken the bear, uh, the crawling baron, uh, because we have Golos. You could search out non-basic lands with uh, Golos, which is kind of cool. But especially in pack one, I just like taking a lot of the big bombs <laughs> like big swingy things in the in pack one if they're available because we still have two packs to go so we don't really know most of our picks aren't done yet right um, so we have a search for Ascanta we were thinking about taking it earlier we have the exclusion mage so that's two pretty good blue cards that we'd be more than happy to play in a deck like this um we also, you know, we took the Baneslayer Angel because another card that we would really want to see is Unburial Rites. There's not a lot of Reanimator uh, in this set. And to be honest, I didn't look at the 60 card update because I like playing things blind. <laughs> not because I'm, like, uh, lazy or don't care or whatever. It's, it's just that, like, I really prefer not knowing what I could possibly see in the next pack. Um, so we have Penar Monocon, which is good with Exclusion Mage, which we might not play, and Golos, and Noxious Gearhulk. So pretty good with three things we have already. 
Um, cast down is just a you know pretty safe bet in terms of having a, a removal spell if that's something that we need by the end of the draft. So I just think taking the safe bet here is especially because we look a little bit all over the place. Uh, surprised that the maze mine come came back. Although, the problem with this is that once you make your pick, if the other people haven't made their pick yet, uh, that was a pretty lucky castle. Um, if you make the wrong pick, the other picks are just staring you in, in the face. That's what somebody said in their last draft. It made me laugh. Um... Waiting on somebody to make their last pick is pretty annoying. And of course it's Bill Pistachio. You know, I've known Bill a long time, Bill Pistachio, and he, he once said to me, never be hasty with last picks. And I said, Bill, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. All right, here we go. Boop -boo. We got a Elspeth Conquers Death. I really want the Beanstalk Giant, but it might come back, but it might not, but I really want it. And a uh, Bone Crusher Giant, but we're not in red at all yet. And, uh, what else can we take? Brain Maggot will come back. Crucible, we don't really have too much that puts lands into a graveyard. Uh, Like, Crucible, I don't even really know what the combo is. I, I saw it, and I, I was thinking, like, maybe some of those uncommon lands from Cal Time, or, like... Because, like, normally when I see Crucible, it's Fetch Lands, Strip Mine, Wasteland. <laughs> and that's kind of the only thing I think about it for. Uh, Beanstalk Giant. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I like, Beanstalk Giant. This, uh, f like, we can't really pass that up. We got a rune map. Uh, excavator, if you have a crucible, you can double down. Uh, this is a pick. Murderous Rider's really nice, too. And Sylvala. like Sylvala. We're pretty sure we're not in white at this point. Um, uh, because... I think I'd rather play that little, that blue, that blue there. We got Phyrexian Tower, Phyrexian Arena, uh, Phyrexian uh, Saga. It's Elspeth's Nightmare. So, this is a sweet, sweet uh, saga. Uh, when it comes to play target creature with power two or less, you know, destroy target creature with power two or less. Uh, next m mode, is, or the next step is. Uh, you look at their hand and uh, make them discard a non-creature non-land, and the last step is you exile their graveyard. And they're all, they're, they're really good. They're, it, it is a really good card, but I'm sure a lot of you have seen it in play. You are on decks and stuff, so you all know about it already. I, I love it. It's one of my favorite sagas, and I love almost all the sagas. Pelucranos is such a beat stick. Pelucranos is so stupid. It just fights everything. And uh, if you have a lot of mana, you can just keep bringing it back, fighting things. Whoa, it's a beast. Uh, ooh, I got a Chupacapra. Settle the Wreckage is probably the best white card in the cube. But uh, white is generally underdrafted because right now it's just not that great. In all the cards on Arena. It's hard to... Hard to be a fan of that color. Uh, what do we got? Woodland Cemetery. We got a little. We got. A, we got. We got to put a little bit of mana fixing up in here. You know, there's not enough mana fixing. We got to fix that mana. Men is all over the place. Come on. 
We have guests. Um, we have a removal spell, but I kind of just want to take the Brain Maggot or the Banishing Light. I'm not excited about playing any of those blue cards as a splash. And I guess with the uh, Crypt Breaker, you could discard cards for Reanimator, but we don't even have anything to reanimate anything yet, so. Uh, Ginger Brute, one of my favorite cards. Uh, but I think I want the Murderous Rider or the Salvalle here. This is a six-person draft, if you haven't noticed yet. I guess you would have noticed every time you saw that five out of six or waiting on six play. You for sure knew, knew this was a six-player trap. Uh, Table of Phyrexian Arena. It's a pretty good card. It's been around forever. It's in cubes, so... Uh, I see Gate Oracle. Again, a card that you've seen in many cubes over the years. Just a great value creature. Uh, Woe Strider, again, just just a really good creature. I'll play it pretty much in any black deck, but it's so good if you if it has synergy with what you're trying to do. Even just being able to sacrifice your uh, creature in response to, like, an Agent of Treachery or something is great. Uh, so I I don't think I'd ever play Beast Whisper in cube. If I was maybe if I was playing twenty three creatures, I just think <laughs> like on turn four in green, that's not what you really want to be doing. Dies to removal and costs four. It's like ugh. Uh, Nightmare Shepherd is interesting, but I don't really want to play it. Uh, I'll just take this exile uh, uh, in Uro. Exile in Uro. I wonder if Uro is still in the cube. Sideboard. This text is shaping up, though. It's shaping up a little bit, right? <clears throat> I like when it just like kind of fills in naturally, you know? Sweet, we got a Sylvala. It's a nice, it's a nice card. I don't think I'd ever play that in cube either. But maybe if there's like the blue white flyers there, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'd play it. Okay, next pick. I am picking. Um, I don't know. Love struck beast. Oh, I really want to play Marari's Wake though. I remember just for nostalgia. That's why I want to play Marari's Wake. Remember playing uh, Marari's Wake in the cafeteria at school. Yeah, that's what you want to do. But I'm so not playing white, but I really want to play Marari's Wake. <laughs> I'm going to have so much mana. And I didn't even get that Ulamog back. Lots of cool cards here. Love Struck Beast. Got too many three drops. Way too many three drops. Take a Mind Stone. Uh, Fable Passage. Fable Passage is great. There's lots of cards we could table here that we would want. 
and lots of cards that other decks would want. Like, all blue and red cards are better than... No, Mindstone's probably not coming back. Fabled Passage, probably not coming back. Oh yeah, Dryad of Elysian Grove goes so well with Oracle of Moldiah. I love them together. Uh, the old, I mean, it's just not on Arena, unfortunately, but Courser of Krufex would be real nice, too. But we're probably not playing blue, so we can take out the blue. Even though we could, like, it would be no problem. We could put, like, one island in this deck and work it out. Uh, Vorinclex, maybe, but I actually kind of like the one in the two drop a little bit better. I do like Innocent Blood a lot as well. But I gotta go with either the Gilded Goose, I think. I think I like it more than Lotus Cover, just because, like, look at our curve right now. And I don't mind starting turn one with either a Goose or a Thoughtseize. That's, either turn one is a very good turn one, right? Uh, if we were thinking about playing white, we could have went into Sun Petal Grove. And then there's also the Knight of Autumn and the Charming Prince. Those are also be interesting cards. So the Hostage Taker. There's, <laughs> yeah, there's a Guardian. There's a lot of cards that could come back. We can play pretty much any of this. Uh, first card that stands out to me is Scavenging Ooze. Slam that right down. Uh, just such a solid beater, especially now, because there's so many graveyard shenanigans, especially in the arena cards, like um, like the Plukranos that's in our deck, and uh, there's Uro, and there's Kroxa, and all these things that you definitely want to deal with. Alright. We got a couple interesting things here. We got a Rankle, or a Maelstrom Pulse. I think we're pretty heavily just in black-green at this point. I think the Rankle. Rankle can just be so, so mean. Alright, we have a black green flippy land. That'll go nicely in our deck. Seeing as how we have already the more than enough playables, even without including the blue cards. Trying to cut them is... It's way easier on an actual arena. Uh, we're <laughs> gonna let the Murray's Wake Dream die. Um, we're just gonna play a simple black-green deck. So, and then we get the black-blue flippy land. I guess even just for, like, sideboard... Because our, we could play this Triton, but I don't think, I don't even know if we want that. We have too many 3-drops already that are way better than that for our deck. I mean, it's better than like a black-red deck, or a, maybe a black-white deck, but whatever. Maybe it'll be good in the sideboard to have a creature with first strike. Um, so I didn't see, I don't know if I've seen this pack before or not, but I don't know if I saw this card is in the cube. This is brand new to the, the, this cube, and I love it. God Pharaoh's Gift. I would, uh, l like, everything becomes a threat. Like, all your early, uh, game stuff. Basically, at the beginning of combat, on your turn, you may exile a creature card, uh, from your graveyard and make a 4-4 four, four zombie token that's a version of that card. And it stays in play and has haste. It's, <laughs> it's pretty uh, pretty good. It's the closest thing to Recurring Nightmare, I think, that you could get on Arena. <clears throat> the Hostage Taker did come back. Yeah, no, I definitely saw this pack before. Uh, so we have a couple different options here. We could take uh, Eliminate or Ravenous Baleth. Ravenous Baleth is r pretty good with God Pharaoh's Gift. But, I mean, it used to be a, a cube stable back in the day, but I think it's just outclassed by newer cards now. Like, compare Ravenous Baleth to Pelucranos. Or, you know, I don't know. It's just not as good anymore. 
but it might be good in the board, especially if we're against some sort of red deck. We have so much removal. We have the Assassin's Trophy, Elspeth's Nightmare, um, Murder's Rider, uh, Rankle, Ravenous Chupacabra, Pelucranos, uh, Noxious Gearhulk, uh, I don't know, did I say Innocent Blood? God Pharaoh's Gift for all of those creatures that kill creatures. Like, <laughs> we're good on killing creatures. So we can cut some of the less. Uh, the last good removal. Uh, removal that sucks the most butts. Cut those first. Black Market's an interesting card. I don't know what uh, to do with it. Uh, definitely not what I'm doing here. But yeah, that's it. That's the draft. I hope you all enjoyed watching. I think uh, I'm going to fix this thing up. And uh, the next time I'll talk to you will be for game one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.